Hi, everybody. Welcome to the premiere, the season premiere of the online soap opera Duluth. I'm so happy that you could be here to join us. My name is Jill Bernard. I'm not a member of the cast or production team. I'm just a fan. I was invited here to introduce you to the series, first of all, because I kind of talked up my connections to Duluth. <laughs> I lived in Duluth. Uh, living is an interesting way to put it. I slept on my brother's couch for uh, too long. He would say too long. It was a futon. It wasn't a couch. I held a lot of ridiculous temp jobs around Duluth. Well, my brother worked at the Duluth Newsroom, which is the newspaper. And I spent most of my time staring out at Lake Superior on a bench in front of in front of the library it was a sad time but a beautiful time because Duluth is genuinely a beautiful beautiful city now a lot of people have been asking me about this soap opera how much of it is real time staring out at Lake Superior on a bench in front of, uh, in front of the library that it was a sad time <laughs> Duluth is genuinely a beautiful, beautiful anyway, city. Anyway, um, I want to people have been asking me about this so often. How much of well, it is that? The time we have it now at Lake Superior on a bench. Uh, I so, want to show you a little slide. This is just a little. Duluth was actually Ojibwe, Chippewa, and Sioux land. And then in 1856, they named it Duluth after Daniel Grissel and Duluth. They immediately had a scarlet fever epidemic. But look at this. This is the St. Lawrence Seaway, and there's Duluth right on it as the most important part of in the 20th century. Um, ore boats would come through and carry iron ore through the Great Lakes. Um, this is, in 1905, they built this beautiful aerial lift bridge. Uh, and at that time, 1905, Duluth was home to the most millionaires per capita in the United States. In 1950, the U.S. steel plant started cranking out steel and taconite products, which went really great until about the 1950s when the iron ore stores kind of right up um, and taconite shippings and orange ore shippings from Duluth Harbor stop. But look, here's Duluth Harbor today. There's that lift bridge that we all love so much. It's a really cool place today. Um, I, I, I want you all to come see it sometime. It's just for me a short drive. Uh, it's a port city. It's got a cool culture, very crafty. You can buy a lot of handmade things. You can hear a lot of great music, uh, great brew pubs. There's a part of it called Canal Park, where you can just enjoy, um, enjoy being in the park and enjoying. There's a little, look at that little lighthouse. Cool, right? Um, yeah, when I was living there in 1997, I did enjoy these beautiful sites. And some of the sites sites some of the locations that you will see in the show tonight or today depending when you're watching are actual Duluth history for example the coffee shop jitters uh was a great coffee shop when i was there in 1997 spent a lot of time there very fun place uh, to, in these these times it's changed names but it still has the same really great coffee that legitimately makes you jittery uh, the Duluth Zenith newspaper is a real newspaper. Um, it's not printing issues now. I don't know if it will, but it's, um, I mean, Duluth has always been a great newspaper town. <laughs> At its heyday, there were like 10 newspapers running, uh, especially because of the shipping news, which is the most important part of the newspaper. Um, is there a lot of snow removal? Yes, that's a legitimate business one would encounter. Um, I don't know if you can tell from this picture, but they, they call it City on a Hill because it's very hilly. 
And my favorite thing about Duluth is when you're standing on the middle of the hill and you look out at Lake Superior, the ore boats are at your eye level. So it seems like the ore boats are floating above you. It's a beautiful visual effect. But in the wintertime, when it could be 40 below Fahrenheit, <laughs> at least for a few days, or 15 below Fahrenheit on an average day, it could be so snowy and so cold that that hill is impossible to climb. And I remember the street that we lived on, you had to have, <laughs> there was a rope on the side and you could climb up the hill back to your apartment hanging onto a rope just up the hill uh, another real place is i don't know i guess we'll learn the name of the bakery that's featured in the show but a bakery i want to plug is amazing grace bakery in duluth is just a haven uh it has great <laughs> has great beautiful i i like that angels heavenly bakery is on the show because i was like is that what it's really called i got amazing grace mixed up in my head <laughs> um, it's anyway you can have actual nice beautiful baked goods right here in duluth now an improvised soap opera is a real challenge because of course soap operas when you watch them on TV, have a complicated plot and exciting relationships. I cannot wait to see how this show develops over the, oh, my video's starting over, look. Um, I can't wait to see how this show develops over the 24 episodes that we're gonna get to see. This is the first episode, starting right after I'm done talking. And then we'll get to see these characters again and again as part of the World Improv Network production of Duluth. I can't wait. Um, you know, it's exciting that the mayor in this show is a woman because the first mayor, the first woman mayor of Duluth was just elected in 2016. Um, Emily Larson is the current mayor. Um, <laughs> I hope she becomes a fan of the show too. I'm a pre-fan of the show, I'm biased because of my love of the loop and improv. Um, I'm here in Minneapolis, but not far from Duluth is always, always in my heart as a beautiful zenith on a hill. <laughs> Um, I'm seeing some great uh, chats, some woohoos in the chat. Um, Carol, thank you. I love these Duluth memories. I have such great depressing Duluth memories. I worked at the cable company and my job was to sort the checks that people mailed in when you mailed checks. Anyway, won't it be fun? I'm excited. Oh. <laughs> And just in one, we are one minute away from the land acknowledgement, which means we're one and a half minutes away from the kickoff of the loop. Let's get some applause in the chat. Oh yeah, I'm seeing some applause. Applause is happening in the chat. We're all here together. Thank you so much for joining us. Now in the chat, get ready. In the chat, I'd love for you to already predict some things. We have a great prediction of what might happen. Alejo says, I hope you will change an actor someday and make his character have an accident that changes his face. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Have a great watch.
Ugh, thank you for meeting with me again. I am, I don't know what happened last time. It was a little crazy. Yeah, that was really crazy last time. I'm so sorry about that, Mayor Warren. I, I, it's such an opportunity to meet with you. Thank you. Well, I just appreciate that you came back. Go ahead, sit down. Um, I guess I just want to go ahead and make you an official offer to come and work for the mayor's office. Mayor Warren, I before I can even think about accepting your offer, I do have to tell you that I might have some conflicts. Since I work at the Zenith with Miss with Miss Grayson. Right. I am well aware of your situation. I I I don't I don't know, I don't understand. Um, why you're even offering me the job? Said you were a bright, young, rising star of the league. You're exactly the kind of person. Yeah. Here's Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for seeing me, Mayor Warren. Why don't you just take a look at the contract? Thank you. I, I will take a look. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Zoe, I brought your truck back. Brought the truck back. Well, good, because my tow truck is broken down, so I need a second truck, all right? I didn't realize you had company. I didn't mean to bar you, bother you now. Look, is that all you came here to say is you brought the truck back? I was... I, I just came for a wrench, sorry. No, you, you're fine. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there, Stace. Okay. Sully, I really need to talk to you about my father in private. I told you that that is something that we will talk about much later. Don't worry about it. Your father? I'd prefer we talk about it now. Talk about it when I'm ready. Got it? Baby, good morning. Good morning. Ah, somebody's awake, huh? Yo, good to take a shower? Uh, I would. I wanted to get to the bakery a bit early to open up. Yes. Uh, um, I'm going to leave the key for you right by the door, okay? Okay. Are you sure you want to go in, babe? How are you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just, it's just some sniffles. I'll, it's all good. 
<laughs> oh, it's just, it's just some sniffles. You are, you are the absolute sweetest. You're the cutest thing that ever existed in all of humanity. And uh, you're what gets me through in this crazy, crazy, crazy city. <laughs> Angel. Thank you. Thank you. Babe. Thank you. You have stepped it up since we've been here. You are the only person in this whole town, this whole place, that I can that I can rely on. Yeah, it has been a bit crazy since getting here, but you've been there along the way. We'll get through this. Is Happy okay? He's fine, Stace. Really, it's just... Soli, you've kind of been like my real father these past few years, and I just really need your help. Ryan. Look, I know that uh, it hasn't been easy for you to have Happy as a father, all right? I know Happy well enough. And that's why I'm asking you to trust me here. Everything's going to be okay. I, I would be careful, Ryan. Thank you for the advice. I'll leave you two to it, okay? Sorry. He's a, he's a kid, you know? Yeah, I, I just, make sure he doesn't get hurt, okay? I don't want anyone to get hurt, Stace, don't worry. Everything's going to be perfect and amazing. Nothing crazy is going to happen today. <laughs> Nothing at all, baby. Stop worrying. I'm Stop not worried. Worrying. I'm not worried at all because you and me, we've got everything under control, right? Everything. You're going to do the bakery thing. Gotten through everything. We've opened the bakery. Everything with all the other Duluthians, like... Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, but you, today, just the bakery, when people walk in, what are you going to say when they walk in? You're going to say... Welcome to Angel's Heavenly Bakery. How may I help you? Still feel weird about the fact that we're only using my name in it, but I get it. Angel hey, Heavenly. You are your your recipes, man. your dream, I'm here to support you. <laughs> I'm here to support you, Angel. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> you know, when we left Chicago, I thought, this is going to be a crazy adventure. And it has been. But you being there has made it all worth it. I don't have a single regret about leaving Chicago. We're following our dreams. Anything to make our dreams come true, Martin. I'm my heart. Ms. Warren, I see a, a really heavy non-disclosure agreement here. Um, I understand there's probably a lot of secrets. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I want you, because I think 
Your talents are being wasted over at the newspaper. You're an ambitious young lady. I do want to succeed. I, I do want to reveal the truth about the loot. And I'm so grateful that you believe in me, Mayor Warren. I do. You remind me of a young me, a real go-getter. And I want you here. So, I think I can be a better mentor than you as Grayson can. And that's the truth. That's the bottom line. Grayson loves me and um, I admire you. What do you want, Yumi? What is it that you want? I want to get to the bottom of things. All right, I will see you at the bakery in a couple of hours. I might, I might need a, 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 a few more than a couple of hours, babe. You do your, your, the bakery thing. I'm going to do my, my fly on the wall thing. Don't give me that look, babe. Angel, we've talked about this. You don't need a snoop. I'm not going to I'm not going to have this conversation again. This is for our protection, Arthur. Okay? Look at what happened. Look at what happened when we were just trusting. Okay? We were new to this town. We thought the city we thought that they were going to welcome us with open arms and what happened? And we got betrayed. It's true. But I'm worried it's... about you. If you're gonna go snooping around and sticking your head into more trouble, I'm afraid of what's gonna happen. I don't want you to get hurt. You, you, you are not the one who should be afraid, okay? Duluth should be afraid, okay? If Duluth is gonna mess with us again, they don't know what's gonna happen, okay? That's a promise. Just don't get hurt. Okay, I will, will not. I will not just passively live my life anymore, Arthur. I know, and I don't want you to. And I will support you. Just be careful. Don't get caught. There's too much to lose. We're not going to lose anything. The loof is gonna lose. Place, you can come here anytime you want. You can borrow all the wrenches and screwdrivers and hammers you need, but we've got to talk, okay? Oh, <clears throat> now you want to talk? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Look, I, I know that it's it's been a crazy time, all right? I I got attacked. I lost my memory, okay? And I know that we talked about lighting something again, but mm -hmm. Elena and I have known each other for so long, and I, I just can't sweep that under the rug. <laughs> I'm not asking you to do that, Babchuck. I'm just... Asking you to give us a chance. I want to. I feel it, but I don't want to hurt you. Well, what if I'm okay with that risk? I'm worried about your sister. She's 
got huh. too much power. She's threatened me before. Maybe if you don't hurt me, then you'll have nothing to worry about. I don't want to hurt you, Stace. Well, then don't, Babchuck. Miss Warren, I want to get to the bottom of things, and I need mentorship. I need guidance. That's exactly what I'm offering. You really want the truth? Maybe Elizabeth is not the person that you want to be working with. She's got a maybe, few secrets of her own. Maybe you're right, Miss Warren, but I can't just leave Miss Warren like that. I would it be possible at all if I could work with you and with the Zenith? Okay, I'm willing to let you do that as long as you sign the NDA. That means no sharing information in this office and hers. No sharing of information between this office and hers. I understand. Have an agreement. Welcome to the mayor's office. Wow. Here are your tips for delays. What do I, I wish you all the luck in the world. I wish you patience, time, silences, depth, trust, direction, desire, and decisions. I wish you all the best. You are about to face a huge challenge and we are going to be holding you back. So the idea that a one minute is not such a little bit of time, so you don't need to rush. And again, that if you're bringing one narrative step into that, then you have a lot of time to also find what's the emotion and what's the details of those of that one minute. It's not about bombarding it with information. And the second thing I want to say to really enjoy the tension between what you say super directly and what is a subtext, especially because the scenes are short. so in a lot of ways you want clarity, but in other times you want to not say things. You want to have a subtext. You want to leave the suspense. You want to have this tension. So how to flirt with that tension, I think, between those two, that would be super interesting. And overall, Good luck, because that sounds so fascinating. It sounds like a, it's like you said, an endeavor. Yumi, that's great news. Oh, Ryan, it's such a great opportunity. I, I don't know how to break it to Miss Grayson, but oh my God, oh my God. I am so proud of you. Oh, Ryan, I couldn't have done this without you. You know, you really build me up. You give me confidence when I feel really down on myself. I, you're just so wonderful, Ryan. Yumi, ever since you came to Duluth, I know you've been searching for something and maybe you finally found it. Oh, Ryan. So I need to find my biological parents. That's why I came to Duluth. You know, when they abandoned me when I was a baby at the Duluth hospital, I didn't know that this would set the course for my whole life. I'm just so glad that I found someone like you, Ryan, to share my quest with. Yumi, wherever they are, whoever they are, I think they'd be proud of you. Right. Okay. Close the door behind you and hold my calls.
Get me Grant. What do you mean who this is? This is Elizabeth Grayson. I'm the owner and publisher of the Zenith. I guess you're new. Just tell him Liz is on the phone. Hey, Grant. How's your wife? Yeah, I heard she was out of town. I guess you are sort of lonely now. Well, that's good because I, I need to talk to you. You know, I tried to get a loan on my house to help, you know, pay some of the bills at the Zenith. And I was turned down by the other bank. And I was thinking since you've made me private loans before that maybe you can come over tonight and we can talk about another one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put some steaks and barbecue just like you like them. I'm glad you Remember to bring your checkbook. I see. Thanks for finally coming by. It's been a minute. <laughs> no, I'm surprised that you live here. That's all. Hmm. Aren't you a little judgmental? I mean, you also came from humble beginnings, you know. Yes, but I didn't stay in humble beginnings. I moved up a little bit. Mm hmm Very little, Sheridan. <laughs> I go by Shay now, if you haven't heard. <laughs> oh, I've heard, Sheridan. <laughs> well, Stace, I've heard about your goings about as well. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Sully? Seriously, Sully? You know, as my sister, I thought you'd be a little bit more supportive. I would be, but I... You know what? You've never really liked anybody I dated, so I don't see how Sully's any different. Just trying to take care of Hmm. Well, maybe you should worry about taking care of Duluth, Mayor Shay. Hi, Sully. Welcome to Angel's Heavenly Bakery, your taste of heaven. What can I do you for today? Yeah, look, uh, I'm not the kind of guy that eats muffins, okay? That's fine. We've got some other stuff other than muffins. We've got some bagels, donuts, cookies. Arthur, 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 please. Is Angel here? No, Angel's out uh, running some errands. Can I help you with something? Okay, good. Yeah, we gotta talk. I'm trying to help you guys. Yeah, but do you, do we need to do it here? Look, it's really simple. I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's starting to think he's some kind of like mafia boss, all right? He needs to calm down, lay low, and just be a normal bakery person. You're talking about Angel? Angel is harmless. He's a fly on the wall. You don't know what he's been doing, do you? He's just been wandering around town. You really don't know what he's been doing. What has he been doing, Sully? 
Brian, you really think she would be proud of me? Absolutely. But why would she reject me in the first place? I, why would you be proud of a child that you didn't, didn't ever want in the first place? I don't know. That's a tough question, Yumi. I, I do know my birth parents, at least my father still, and I'm not even sure if he wants me. And, and your mom? Yeah, well, I haven't seen my mom in years either. But Yumi, I'm sure there was a good reason they gave you up and they would be more than happy to see you again. Babe, I think I, think I want to get back on our investigation project and find our moms. I'm glad you said that, because I think I might have a lead. What has Angel been doing then? They are the sweetest. I thought you were talking about Ryan. Look, all I know is that Angel keeps walking around thinking that they're, you know, some kind of super spy. They're not a super spy, though. I, I'll i tell you, Sully, I've been trying to tell them. But Angel, Angel got hurt, and they need some time. People get hurt in Duluth, all right? It's that kind of city. And if you go pushing people around and poking your nose in places where they doesn't belong, someone's gonna break it. Then what should I do, Sully? Just you two not in a relationship? Yes, but I cannot. I'm not Angel's boss. I support them. You better do if something. You want, if you want Angel to stop, then you talk to him. Maybe I will. I mean, I know that you know how dirty this town can be. Like, why do you care about me and my blood life? It's my job to care. I know. And I, I appreciate that. I, I just, <laughs> I mean, at what point am I going to be able to take care of myself? Guess I never thought about that. I mean, you're a great sister. I just haven't really had a chance to mess up. I mean, if I get hurt, I know you'll be there, but maybe I should fall. I mean, I love you. Just let me fall. I don't suppose you have any clues as to where they are? Angel mentioned he was going to, they were going to the docks.
But don't hurt Angel. I'm not trying to hurt either of you. I'm trying to help you both. When stuff goes down in this town, I'm the person you come to. When there's trouble and you need to hide out or you need something to fix it, I'm the person you come to. You're right. To You're right, Sully. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really am. You have been there for us. And I know you mean well. I'll talk to Angel again. Maybe if you talk to him, it'll get some sense into the brain, but... I just need a bit of time to heal. I won't hurt them. But... I might have to scare him a little. Just don't tell me how you're going to do it. Okay, Sully? As you wish. I mean, when we were younger, like, <laughs> you love to clean up my messes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, I mean, growing up in Duluth, like, there's just such a great opportunity here for both of us, you know? I do. Okay. I hear you. Back off. Really? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> I mean, you've said that before, and I just... Listen to me. <laughs> We're all grown up, and I have to accept that. Thanks, Shay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if I um, ever need you, I know where to find you. Sisters? Yeah. Cheers to sisters. Ryan, it's always been you and me. It has. Okay, Yumi, I'm just going to come out and tell you what I know because I don't know if you're going to like it. Tell me. You have to tell me. It's okay, whether I like it or not. Yeah. You just have to tell me the truth, Ryan. Wait. Yumi, I... What? I think there's someone on that boat over there. Hello, is someone there? Hello? Hello? What? They just stuck their head down like, oh my God, that person's spying on us. Do you think he heard everything? I don't know whoever they are, but Yumi, I don't know if it's okay for us to talk out here. Maybe we should meet again at your place. Okay, Ryan, let's go to my place. Um, nobody's favorite improv warm-up is checking microphones and camera levels, so please take some time uh, before your show to breathe and be as present as you can be. I've, I enjoy touching the, the face of my scene partner through the camera on the screen, as weird as that is, just to take some time to connect and make sure you are in your body and in your space and not caught up in the technical elements. Well, I think you're all probably amazing improvisers and you know, you got this, it's in the bag. I would say work on working in front of a camera. That's a whole different shtick. Uh, for me, 
doing everything with the camera. I, I had to learn a lot of extra skills, like understanding that small facial gestures convey a lot when you're on camera. And when you're on stage, you have to, oh no. And when you're on a camera, it's like, what? and that's enough, you know, people understand. So make sure, tone it down, and it helps. It helps when you do things on camera because you know, you don't have to take it to an extreme and it makes everything easier. You know, understanding this really helped me. Uh, on stage, you need to do a lot of work. And on camera, you can do things a lot more subtly. And for me, it was a really reassuring moment to understand that if I'm acting in a scene and there's cameras, I can, you know, take my time, do things slowly and subtly, and you don't need everything to be an outburst of emotions. Christine, where are you, Christine? Why are you nowhere to be found? Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Maybe there's something going on. Nobody's on the town. Maybe there's something going on at the docks. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, there's, you always there's talk to yourself here? Hi. <laughs> you know what they say, uh, um, really intelligent people talk to themselves. So then why are you doing it? You're so funny, Sally. You're so funny. Yes, of course. Yes, comedian. Give, give, give people guns. You know, it's all good. Everything is a joke. Life is great. <sighs> That's exactly why I'm here. I told you before, I want that gun back. And I told you that is our only, that's the thing that saved our lives. You think I'm just going to give it back? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Because you're acting like an idiot. You're running around, hiding in boats. You don't, you don't think people see you? You think you're James Bond? Am I, am I, am I, am I, is it, is it, is it, does it bother you to see me out and about just living my life? Is that, is that bother you? What are you talking about? I'm trying to help you. Don't you get that? Face, you never let me take pictures of you before. What's come over you this time? I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to get business up for the marina. You look beautiful. Really? Well, can you can you smile a little more? Oh, I, this is so awkward. Gosh. Is something going on? Um I, I don't maybe I don't When is there not anything going on in this town? <laughs> oh my gosh. I know I've been hearing a lot of uh rumors. I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. What? R rumors about me? Involving you. I don't know if I should tell you. You know, last time I was in here, Arthur, things did not end so well for me. Oh, I was about to say, welcome to Angel's Heavenly Bakery, your taste of heaven, but I don't know if I want to say that to you, Ryan. Are you having Angel spy on me? What? No!
No. Because I saw them at the docks today, Arthur. <sighs> Are you sure it wasn't somebody else? I'm pretty... It wasn't your dad, it wasn't Sully. I'm sure. I know. I know what you two are trying to do. And I thought that we had settled this and we were going to keep our distance. But obviously you can't do that, can you? I said I would keep my distance. I don't know what Angel's doing. Ryan, you scared Angel. Well, I'm gonna scare Angel again if you two keep pressing into my business. Ryan, like I said before, you stay away from Angel. You stay away from me. Yeah, we'll see about that. You know what, I'm gonna take one of these to go. Put it on uh, someone's tab, I don't care who's. I will. Ryan, anything to get you out of my bakery. Don't come back here again, Ryan. What do you mean you don't know if you should tell me? I mean, you already started telling me by saying that. Oh, I know, Stace. I just thought you were maybe aware of it. I I just, you know what they say about the messenger. I don't want to be that messenger, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I, I saw Cher, Shay, Shay earlier, and she, she mentioned some things, but that's family. You're not. So what are you, what are you not telling me? I just don't want your heart to get broken. If you know something, you should tell me. Look, I don't want you to get caught with that gun, all right? It's that simple. Look, I'm not carrying it on me. I know that what happens to people with guns is that they get shot, okay? It's already happened, I know. I don't want it to happen again. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just watching, Sully. I'm just watching. <clears throat> you don't understand, all right, Angel? That gun has been used before. You're telling me that you gave Arthur and I? I gave you a gun. What, what was it? Do I want to know what it was used for, Sully? Do I want to know? This is my point, Angel. You're asking too many questions. You're poking your nose in places it doesn't belong. If you want another gun, I'll get you one. But that one you shouldn't have. Do you understand? I, I do understand, okay? You, 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 you gave us a gun that had been used in another crime, obviously, to frame us, Sully! Is that what you're telling me? Give me the gun back, and then no one's being framed, you idiot. That's right, that's right. Give you the gun back and give all the control to you. That's what this what Duluth just wants us to give up. Just roll over, show us your belly. We'll give you a scratch. That's right. You wanna know why, Angel? 
because you're a puppy dog with your puppy dog eyes, giving puppy dog looks, waiting for all of your cute little cuddly moments. Duluth is a pit bull and it's gonna eat you alive. Do you understand? And I'm holding the leash. You don't know who I am. You don't know who we are. You don't know what I will do. Thank mm -hmm. you.